Cursor, the leading AI code editor, just announced their biggest release ever, Cursor 2.0. Now, with this release comes a whole new AI coding model that the Cursor team put together themselves, as well as a whole new interface for interacting with the AI agents that are modifying your code. So today we're gonna take a look at all of that and build an application from start to finish, and I'll show you exactly how to use all of these new tools. I want to thank the Cursor team for giving me early access to play around with Cursor 2.0, and I've been very impressed with the product so far. First off, Cursor is a desktop application, so you're going to want to download it, and to do that, you'll just go to cursor.com, hit the download button, and then install it. On the pricing front, it is a paid product, but there is a one-week free trial, so I suggest you start with that and then upgrade to a pro plan if you think it's worth your time. Keep in mind, it can get pretty expensive, so for me personally as a professional developer, I fall into the ultra tier and sometimes use their usage-based pricing, which is described in their documentation. Okay, now once you've downloaded Cursor and installed it, you're going to open it up. It's going to look something like this. Cursor works with files on your computer, so your options are to either open a project, which is just a folder on your computer, or to clone a Git repo into a folder. So I'm gonna open up this folder here, which is really just an empty project. I haven't done anything in here just yet. And right now we're looking at the agent view, which is the new thing in Cursor 2.0. They're moving towards a more agentic AI centric approach as opposed to the editor view, which is gonna show you all of the files and the file contents. So let's stay in this new agent view for now and we'll see how far we can get. To get the project started quickly and have a nice baseline to work with, I'm gonna use Create Volo app, which is my free and open source starter kit. You can check it out on GitHub in the description or you can just ask Cursor to use it. So I'm gonna say, please use Create Volo app to start the project. And right here, we're going to use the agent mode, which is gonna allow Cursor to actually run commands and modify files. And we're gonna use the Composer 1 model. This is the new AI model that the Cursor team has actually created, but you can always switch to other leading industry models in the dropdown. I usually use Sonnet 4.5, but I'm looking forward to trying out Composer 1 because it is very fast. So I'll go ahead and submit that request and I'm gonna run this command. What this is gonna do is just set up a basic front end, back end, and local database that I can work with so I can just define specific features for my app instead of trying to set up all of this stuff from scratch. Okay, looks like the project was set up. Now we can go ahead and start the server. It's gonna run pnpm run dev, and I'm actually gonna click this to see where the app is running. Looks like it's over here on port 5501. Okay, there we go. This is the basis of our app. Now I'm gonna open a new agent, which is gonna allow me to give Cursor a fresh context. That way it's not bogged down in the details of setting up the project. And instead, I'm just gonna have it focused on the specific features that I describe. And to start, I'm gonna wanna customize my project. I wanna build a habit tracking app where you can plant your habits and then see them grow over time. So I'll describe all of that, and I'm going to switch this agent to use the plan mode so that before it actually builds anything, it's gonna create a detailed plan that it will follow and take things step by step. This planning and then building approach is really effective because it allows you to correct the AI before it goes down and makes a bunch of changes that you didn't necessarily want. So I'm gonna use this new voice input method and describe my app. We are building a habit tracking app that allows users to plant habits and see them grow over time as they follow those habits day after day. I've described my app and I'll submit the request. It looks like Cursor was able to quickly explore the code base and understand what we're working with. And now it's asking me for some of the details to clarify what I want to build. I've clarified my plan for Cursor, and now it's going to start actually writing this plan. And we can see that this Composer 1 model is very fast. Now, generally speaking, you'll want to spend a good amount of time reviewing these plans because once the AI implements it, it's harder to fix it than to just implement it the right way the first time. So I would review this 
and then when you feel comfortable with it, you can go ahead and ask Cursor to build it. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. And it's going to start working through this to-do list that it's put together for itself. Cursor is asking me to run a couple of commands here. And this is the beautiful thing with Cursor agents is that they can just run commands, they can modify files, they can read files and search for data, they can look things up online. Okay, Cursor has finished working and it has written 12 different files for us. We can see over a thousand lines of code. Now we can review these changes. And this is another part of Cursor 2.0 and this whole new view is that we can see all of these changes file by file and it makes it a lot more convenient to review all in one place instead of having to flip around different files. So here I can see that it's you know removed some lines, it's added some lines and quickly navigate through all of the changes that it's made. Now, in addition to reviewing it yourself, you can actually click this find issues button and then cursor is going to go through on its own and review the code looking for any potential problems that the implementation agent may have caused. It looks like this time around the agent found no issues, but I love to see this direction that cursor is taking of having the planning and the review be a core part of this implementation flow. Prior to Cursor 2.0, I've been using my own planning and review prompts. You can find them on my GitHub, but it's great to see them actually incorporating this into the core workflow of Cursor itself. Let's flip over and see what this looks like right now. Okay, so we got a habits page. Let's create a habit. This looks good. Let's say drinking water and we want it to be daily. Okay, it looks like there's an issue with the font color there, but we have some plants. Let's plant this flower. I'll create it. Okay, so that's not working. I can open the dev tools and see that there are some issues here. Now, usually I would actually go and copy paste these into cursor, but I'm gonna show you another cursor 2.0 feature, which is the fact that they've added the browser into cursor. So here I'll click connect to browser and I'll click Google Chrome. And here I'll say, please check the errors in the browser console log. Okay, here it looks like it's going to the wrong place. I'm actually gonna stop it because whatever changes it's making, it's making on some poor assumptions because when it opened it, it wasn't actually looking at the app. So I'm gonna go back and I'm actually gonna click this button right here, which will revert the changes that it made since this message. That way I can always go back. And this is something I love about Cursor. It doesn't come natively in a lot of other AI coding apps. Um, I really like the ability to just go back to a previous checkpoint. Let me try something a little different here. I'm gonna say browser tab. That way we can see it right in here. And I'll say, please check the error logs. And then I'll give it the actual URL so that it goes to the right place. Check it out. It's actually autonomously driving this browser. So it actually went to this page, checked the logs, and then seeing that there's an error, now it's updating the API. It's really impressive to see this level of interaction directly in the code editor. So now let's go ahead and try to create a habit. Create. Okay, so this button is still not working, and I wonder if it is able to capture the logs from me trying to create it. Actually, you know what? I just read the message and I think it was because the PNPM DB push didn't work originally. So I'm going to go ahead and open a new terminal and I'll run that directly. Okay, let's try this again. Create. Boom. There we go. Great. So we were able to add this habit. Now let's check out the garden. Okay, it doesn't quite load. Looks like we have dev tools right here that we can take a look at the logs. Again, I don't even have to leave cursor anymore to see this stuff. I, I can just see what is going on right here and I'll just describe it to cursor. I'll just say, I see these logs in the browser. When I go to the garden page, can you take a look? Okay, looks like cursor was able to fix the issue and we have our first little habit that gets planted. Now what I'm gonna do is actually open a new agent and start iterating on this. And I'm gonna actually run two agents in parallel because first of all, I wanna improve the experience on this page and also do some cleanup to remove some of the other unnecessary pages. So I'll open up a new agent and I'll say, 
please make the garden the default page where we land at when we go to the app and remove the other unnecessary pages other than the habits page. So we'll start that. Then I'm gonna start another agent in parallel and I'll say, we just built a basic habit tracking app and we have the garden page, which is supposed to allow us to plant our habits. But right now it seems to just automatically plant them for us and it just has a really bland background. So let's plan a much more interesting and engaging way to interact with the app. And then I'm gonna switch it to plan mode so that we can have a concrete idea of how this will actually work. Looks like the other agent has finished. I'll take a look and looks like it's modified things in app TSX and the app sidebar. That's great. So now when I go to the app, I see the garden and I see the habits. So this all looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and click keep all. You don't really have to. Cursor does make changes to the files as it goes. So to undo the changes, you have to reject them, but keeping them just basically makes it easier for you to see further changes that are made, but it's not strictly necessary to keep accepting them all of the time. The other agent has created a plan, so I'm gonna go ahead and review that. And the proposed changes sound great to me, so I'm gonna go ahead and click build. The thing I really like about this Cursor 2.0 workflow is that it finally moves you beyond the individual files and helps you focus on specific features that you're building out while still giving you access to those files and seeing the changes just in a much more consolidated and streamlined way. Cursor has finished this other feature, so I can review that. I can take a look at the individual files, but let's see what it looks like in the browser. Let me create a habit again. Seems like it's having issues with the API again, so I'm gonna ask it to fix that. It looks like it correctly identified that we needed to add a couple of fields to the database, and it's created a new migration file here. And when you're working on a real application, you're always gonna end up in the weeds on stuff like this, where you're getting errors and you have to deal with the database. And if you don't understand software basics or how to use these tools, it can be hard to make progress. So if you wanna learn how to use these tools and how to build a real product, check out my AI coding for entrepreneurs course. It's on Skill Leap AI, there's a free trial. And we go all the way from starting in ChatGPT with basic scripts, moving into Lovable and building a landing page, and finally using Cursor to build a full stack application. I think it's a great resource and a great way to get started on your AI coding journey. Now to fix this issue, I'm gonna run PNPM DB push again so that our database is updated. And now we can see the habit here because our database is working properly. Now I'll go to the garden and we can actually select this and place it on the canvas. But I don't like how squished this looks. So what I'm gonna do is actually use this new select element option. And I'm going to select all of this and it's going to add it as context for cursor. That way I can describe the changes that I need specific to these UI elements. And I'll say, let's keep the habit seeds at the top so that we can see the garden in full width at all times. Okay, there we go, that's looking pretty good. Let me go ahead and drag this. Doesn't look like it can drag, so I'll add that as a to-do, but for now I can click it and place it. I'll put it right there, great. Now I see as I'm scrolling around, it kind of zooms in and scrolls at the same time, so that's an issue I wanna fix. And I'm just gonna come up with these little edits and provide a list to cursor and it'll just work through all of them. So I'll ask it to fix those couple of issues. And then I'm actually gonna open a separate agent so that we can add the page to actually track these habits. I've described my feature, and now I'm gonna show you one other really powerful thing about Cursor 2.0, and that's the ability to run several agents in parallel. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's just start with two. We're gonna have Cursor implement this feature twice, and we'll be able to compare the different versions of it so we can choose which one to go with. This can greatly accelerate development, especially when you're doing something kind of creative and you wanna see some different ideas. You can also choose different models to run in parallel. So let's say we wanna run one with Composer 1 and another one with Sonnet 4.5. So we'll actually have three of them running and let's go ahead and send it off.
we can see that they're running in parallel and when they need me to do something there's a little icon there that will prompt me looks like the two composers are done and sonnet 45 is finishing up now in terms of reviewing the results of these different agents you can see all of the files that they've changed here and review them on the right but seeing it update in the ui is a little bit more tricky so what you have to do is actually click this apply all button and that will apply the changes of this particular agent to your main branch so you can see it in your ui and your actually functioning software so now i'm going to flip back over here and we see now that there's a whole calendar view now if i want to go check out the other branch i'm going to undo apply and i'm going to go over there to the other one and click apply on that one now if i flip over looks like this particular agent failed to import a particular item in here so i can just abandon this branch and just go with the one that works just reviewing it again in the cursor browser and i'm pretty happy with how it looks so i can check it as complete and we see it reflected in the calendar i can drag and drop and that's a feature we added in the other agent that was running in parallel so you can start to see how this is really becoming a full application now if I come back to this later and I don't know what's going on, I can simply open up a new agent and just ask about how this works. So here, for example, I'll ask it how we track the habit streak and cursor is going to go read through all the files, come up with an answer. This is something I actually did recently in create Volo app when I came back to the project three months after working on it and I wasn't sure how to deploy the new version of it. So I just asked cursor, it read through all my files and reminded me of the proper way to publish a new version of Create Volo app. I noticed that on this page, it was saying zero days, even though in the calendar it had an actual streak. So I asked it why that might be happening and cursor went through again, a bunch of different files to figure out what was causing that problem. So you can see that it actually works in a real code base. It can find the relevant files and get to the root cause of whatever issue you might have. It even proposed a solution for me. So I'm gonna switch this to agent mode and say, please implement this in my code. Now, when I refresh it, we see that it has an actual streak going. So it's looking pretty good. So everything we've looked at here is pretty much brand new cursor 2.0. You can always go back to the editor and see all of your files side by side. You can still use the new cursor browser inside here, which can be a really powerful way to also interact with the cursor agent. This is the more traditional view right in the editor. We see all of our files on the side here. Here we have the contents. We can see now the browser. We can see these plan files. And of course, we always have our chat on the right. So you still have access to all of those original features. But it seems to me that the Cursor 2.0 agent view is a really effective way to build software now that we're thinking about it more at the feature level instead of the individual file or individual function level. If you want to learn more about those traditional cursor features, make sure to check out this other related video, which is going to go more into depth on that. Now, I also want to share a channel update, which is that I'm going to be shifting the format around a little bit. I realize that my videos are kind of scattered. There's tutorials, model reviews, multi-hour builds, stuff for beginners and experts. And I wanted to come up with a format that was going to take the best aspects of all those different types of videos and make something that would be more more consistent, valuable, and teach you AI coding in the context of building real projects. So moving forward, the channel is going to change around a little bit. Instead of having these sort of tool-driven tutorials, I'm going to be building cool stuff. And that aligns more with what I want to be doing anyway. And in the process, I'll be showing you all the different AI tools I use, how I work through various problems, and you'll get to see me build something cool. I'm planning to kick this off with three videos released at the same time in the next few weeks, and that will be the beginning of a new chapter for the channel. So I hope you enjoy the new videos and thank you for your support. As always, thanks for watching. Take care.